Beautiful women, hi, it's JD. Dropping in on this Moon Day Monday in Australia to uh, cover all the things because I thought I was really ambitious at the beginning of this month when I started my cycle. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do Moon Day Mondays and Sacred and Sensual Saturdays and Storytelling Sundays. But do you know what? Just doing one thing a week feels like enough for me right now. So thank you for all participating in choosing a card. Super fun. Um, the reading is actually quite confronting. So I wanted to come in on Moon Day to explain the reading because we are in the final days of Scorpio season and Scorpio is about death. It's about bringing completion. It's about illuminating that which is ready to be released. It's also ruled by Pluto and Mars. So it can, it can be such a fucking confronting time of year, Scorpio season. Especially right now, because we have Mercury retrograde, Scorpio and Uranus all really in this configuration that is super, super challenging. So the cards, as I turned them over, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> way to go universe. Thank you so much for the positive reading. But this is the thing that I love about being a woman who is connected to this ancient wisdom and the journey of archetypes and you know the cycles of the sun the moon the stars and the sky and the tarot fits into this perfectly because for me tarot is our our handbook to alchemy it's how we learn to transmute to work with the energies of life you know like the the air and the fire the water the earth the ether you, we've got our mind we've got our sexual creative energy inspired energy spiritual energy we've got our emotional energy and relationships we've got our physical experience and we have these archetypal blueprint journeys that we all go through. So at the end of Scorpio season, when I look at this reading, I'm hearing that we are literally as a collective, we're in a place where we're being asked to have another look at ourselves. At the beginning of this month, I shared the story of Inanna. I, I keep saying Inanna. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, whatever. The story of Inanna being stripped of her identity and going into the underworld. So as a collective, we're going through this time where we are having a new look, a refreshed view of how we see ourselves, what's important to us. The veils of illusion are being lifted from our eyes and this is very confronting. So what I've chosen is card one is the seven of cups. And the seven of cups is an invitation to start to tell ourselves a new story it's trusting the inner woman within us that she has the eyes to see she knows in her gut when someone is playing the fool with her this is the card of illusion and the breaking of illusion and this is something to celebrate it's something to you know you might have ideas and ideals in your head around love that are keeping love away from you so if you chose number one 
Perhaps it's time to tweak the way that you conceptualize what love is. The questions to ask yourself is, am I codependent in love? What are my attachment styles? What is it, what keeps showing up? What illusions am I about myself through the way that I identify with myself? What illusions am I entertaining? Yeah? And allowing your sense of sovereignty, how you connect with yourself, breathe into your body, breathe into your womb, your pussy, your heart, fucking call back in your presence from all the directions. And the thing is with this seven of cups energy is like, it's the water. And as women, we can be so fucking chaotic. Emotion can be so, so intense. And so with the seven of cups, we're being asked to re-navigate to step out of the illusion of separation, the ways, the stories that we've told ourselves and to come into this place where we're like really reclaiming our birthright of oneness with all things, all beings and particularly with ourselves and our sovereignty. So that's number one. Number two is the hangman. And the hangman is a super interesting card. So there are so many ways to interpret the hangman. I personally welcome this card. Sometimes we have to hang upside down on the tree of life to have a new vision. We have to have a new way of looking at ourselves. It's a wake up call, but in a gentle way. See, like you can see this bat, what is he doing? He's hanging upside down from the tree and he's wrapped up in inside of his cocoon. In the Medicine Woman Tarot, this card is vision and it's a picture of a woman staring at herself in the waters. This is the waters of life, the waters of illusion, the waters of perception. And so if you look at both of these, depictions of the bat who brings the medicine in the darkness it's really amazing it's like drawing into yourself all of the goodness and and not just the goodness the dark and the light all that you are drawing that in and just taking refuge and rest so the hangman is saying you are in a transition point and the way to move through this is truly by taking some rest. Please don't try and force an outcome right now. That is not what you're meant to be doing. Everybody who's chose to just take a moment, allow yourself to rest. It is quite often really frustrating the hangman time because you know, we want everything done yesterday but there's no flow to do it right now yeah the magic is in wrapping those wings around yourself and really cocooning in and having a new vision of who you are and this is a call to oneness again out of separation and into oneness the sun's just gone down and it's going dark really quickly um and the last card is the Ten, the Ten of Swords. I welcome this card because the cool thing is, is that once we get to the Ten, we're almost at the end of that cycle and season. So it, it indicates that there's completion. It also, I want to invite everybody who chose card number three, which is the 10. I want to invite you to have a look at the way you're perceiving the situation say you're in right now. So maybe you're feeling a little bit trapped. Maybe you are extremely burnt out. Maybe you haven't been balanced in your mind. Perhaps it's time to take some mental health days. 
yeah how are you using the incredible tool of your mind to perceive the situation that you're in so again zooming out and seeing this overall reading and the energy behind it is really really looking at that we're all being called into a new vision in these last final days of Scorpio we're being called into new vision we're being called to release the moon is waning we're on our way into the dark moon I think she she's dark next week so we complete this season and then we only have one solar cycle we go into Saggi in a few days and we've got the Saggi cycle and then Christmas is here where we're at the equinox and um, we're at the solstice point again so yeah for the next six weeks we're completing an entire decade so it does not at all surprise me that this reading is 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 one of new vision it is one of remembering it's one of reclaiming our sovereignty and it, it's one of saying i am a fucking warrior woman i'm putting down my sword that i'm fighting with and i'm taking up the sort of truth within myself to begin to walk in oneness to reclaim my sovereignty and to weave the world that I dream of through the mastery of how I walk with the air, the fire, the water, the earth, the ether, how I walk with the fractals of my own consciousness, the stories that I entertain and to have the courage to go into those shadow layers of pain and the stuff that needs to be let go of. Mercury retrograde season is all about revisiting and it's probably been quite painful for some of us. I know for me it has been, it's far out man. Everyone that I know is, has been going through a challenging time. So if you're going through a challenging time Please take heart. Yeah. And I'm here. I'm here to do soul support sessions. If you want a reading, please get in contact with me. We can tee one up over WhatsApp or Zoom or wherever you are in the world. We can create a time. And yeah, I hope this has brought you some clarity. And if you need further support, please reach out. Got some really exciting things happening in the new year. Some juicy business support for witchy women, working with the cycles, um, you know, from solstice to equinox and through the, the quadrants of the year and weaving some beautiful big magic there. Yeah. So anyway, I'm signing out. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing this time with me. I love you all. I'm so grateful for the community we have here in the, in the Sacred Women Mystery School and the group. And yeah, I'll speak to you soon. So much love. Mwah.